The next step in this Meeting in Your Pocket Limerence Anonymous series is step three. And again, I used AI to help me write it, write it up. And uh, in our awesome uh, little literature, I want to thank AI. I ask AI. They're www.iask.ai. And the ask is with a capital A. Okay. Um, I'm going to be also putting it up on the uh, description so you guys can uh, click on it. It's going to say according to ask.ai and since the uh, step three and since this whole idea is my idea, I only asked AI for help. Okay, get the disclaimer out of the way. Um, welcome to another video of Limerence Anonymous. Analysis of Step 3. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. Introduction to Step 3. Step 3 of a 12-step program emphasizes a significant shift in perspective regarding personal control and responsibility. This step encourages individuals to relinquish their will and lives to a higher power, which is interpreted differently by each participant based on their beliefs. Again, the higher power can be anything you perceive. The atheists are going to have, we're going to have to be very creative. Essence of this step lies in the acknowledgement that self-reliance has limitations, especially when dealing with complex emotional states such as limerence. I'm Carol and I suffer from limerence. Um, I have done my level best to use my willpower to deal with my limerence over the past winter dealing with my crush on uh, someone at the IOP and um, it hasn't worked very well um, even even praying to the Lord um, sometimes I think praying causes more anxiety because I'm kind of stirring it up again um, other times I will shut down and I will sometimes need to uh, Zoom or call my mentor in Canada and ask him for guidance. And the same thing he always tells me is, Jen Carroll, you're powerless over this. You don't have any control over their behavior. And you only have control over your own. And God is in charge. Your higher power is in charge, not you. Uh, your job is to follow him. Your job is to do the right thing, and the right thing is to love this person as though they were your sibling or your neighbor, and um, if you can interact with them that way, you have nothing to worry about, and I can calm down. If I really put my energy in that place, I can calm down. A lot of the anxiety is feeling like I'm not good enough, feeling like I'm not enough, especially to this other person. And in the light of what I thought she was telling me uh, a couple days ago, um, I had the impression that she might be seeing me as an object of pity. And I'm going to be making a video about that shortly. Um, I asked the same uh, website this, the question, uh, who wants to be an object of pity? Not me, no one. Um, and they broke down the difference between empathy and sympathy and... Yeah, empathy and sympathy. And pity. And um, they're very different. They're similar, but they're very different. And I'll go into that next video. That's a whole other video. How does this pertain to step three? My own experience, strength, and hope, ladies and gentlemen. God loves me as I am. And I need to turn my will in my life and my limerence over to him. Because my uh, willpower does have limits. Understanding turning over our will. Here we go. Here's the meat of this step. Turning over one's will involves recognizing that personal efforts alone may not suffice in overcoming challenges associated with limerence. Limerence, characterized by intense romantic attraction and obsessive thoughts about another person, can lead to emotional distress and unhealthy behaviors. 
my unhealthy behavior is to uh, isolate. My unhealthy behavior is to run away. My unhealthy behavior is to have an idea about this person and live in that instead of remembering what they really are. You know, the, the worst thing you can do to a person is objectify them or be objectified by them. Um, whether it's a romantic idea or an idea that you know, we should feel sorry for them, they're having a hard time, glorify pity, or glorify romance, or romanticize pity, God forbid, have a horrible, perverted co combination of those two. By deciding to turn one's will over to a higher power, individuals are encouraged to seek guidance, support, and strength beyond their own capabilities. The higher power could be our Lima group, our Limerick Synonymous group, or it can be just people sharing with one another uh, how they, they're dealing with it. This act of surrender does not imply passivity or abandonment of personal agency. Rather, it signifies an act of choice to seek help from a source perceived as greater than oneself, be able to bask in a power greater than ourselves, and be enfolded by it, and embraced by it. This could be understood through various lenses, spirituality, religion, or even philosophical frameworks that emphasize interconnectedness and support systems. I don't know why Helen Keller comes to mind. She does. The concept of God as we understand him. The phrase as we understand him is crucial because it allows for inclusivity and personal interpretation. Participants are encouraged to define their understanding of God or a higher power in a way that resonates with them personally, so it doesn't have to be the higher power that I believe in. It can be whatever whatever you think can give you a sense of unconditional love or safety or support, no matter what happens. This can range from traditional religious views such as Christianity, Judaism, Islam, to more abstract concepts like nature, the universe, or collective human consciousness. This flexibility is vital for fostering an environment where individuals feel safe, exploring their spirituality without fear of judgment or dogma. It promotes individual growth while respecting diverse beliefs within the group. Implications for recovery from limerence. In the context of recovery from limerence, Acceptance. Individuals must accept that they cannot control every aspect of their feelings or relationships. Again, I'm picturing myself walking over to the, the door of the IOP and freaking out. I can't control how I feel. But I can turn my feelings over to God. It's vital that I do that. It's funny, the thought of me going over to the IOP and thinking about her, my, my limerent person, um, causes me so much anxiety. I can feel it right here in my diaphragm. But the idea of turning that over to God, knowing that God, God will take care of it, I'm calming down. My diaphragm is opening up again. You know, limerence can cause a physical reaction. Now, where was I? Okay, acknowledging this limitation can be liberating. Yeah, no kidding, I just said something in that respect. Support system. Turning one's life over to a higher power often leads individuals to seek community support, whether through group meetings or other forms of social interaction, which is essential for healing. Now, I have avoided groups because um, there are no existing 12-step programs for limerence. Uh, there, there is the S meetings, the Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, and Sex Addicts Anonymous, and there was an online support group for limerence that I joined briefly, and I talked about what was going on, and I tried to share my struggle, and I did run into some judgment there. So I think it's really important that we we practice non-judgmentality, no matter where another person is, and we practice non-judgmentality on ourselves, and we should expect non-judgmentality Limerence is a very serious problem, and it's like alcoholism, it is cunning, baffling, and powerful. And without help, it is too much for us. We need to be able to depend on each other 
for at least the understanding. And even if we can't be emotionally available at all times, especially with this going on, at least have a, have a kind attitude for one another. At least practice that. If you don't know how to do that, look it up for goodness sakes. You're on the internet already. Um, and there's God, you know. We all have a higher power. We all must have a higher power in common as well as this problem. Then we go into the solution. Guidance. May, many find comfort in prayer or meditation as tools for reflection and guidance during difficult times related to limerent feelings. Many find comfort in prayer or meditation as tools for reflection and guidance during difficult times related to limerent feelings. I had to repeat that to uh, appreciate the context. Empowerment through surrender. Empowerment through surrender. Paradoxically, surrendering control can empower individuals by allowing them to focus on what they can change, namely their responses and actions. Rather than fixating on uncontrollable external factors, I have found that I've had to, I've had to even gray, lo gray rock the limerent person. Maybe not quite gray rock, because I don't want to be cold to her, but um, I have to gray rock this fire inside me. Spiritual growth. Engaging with this step can lead participants toward deeper spiritual exploration and growth, enhancing their overall well-being beyond just addressing limerent feelings. Conclusion Step 3 serves as a pivotal moment in the journey towards recovery from limerence by encouraging individuals to let go of excessive control and embrace the supportive framework provided by a higher power as they understand the higher power. This step fosters acceptance, community connection, and remember, non-judgmentality, personal empowerment, kind attitude. Through surrendering control and spiritual growth, all essential components for navigating the complexities associated with limerent experiences. That's why, as well as practicing this 12-step program, I am trying to practice a code of universal ethics. kind attitude, compersion, no ill will, even if we don't understand one another. This is very vital and important. We must continue to wish grace and love and support toward one another. And we must give it to ourselves so that we can be available to give it to one another. Okay, top authoritative sources used in answering this question. Alcoholics Anonymous, the 12 Steps, A Guide for Everyone, Psychology Today, probability the answer is correct, 95%. So thank you, AI, for your help. Uh, thank you, people, for watching this. God bless you.